Hi, we're back again. And our first guest this morning is an old friend of ours. He has been here before and we wanted to keep him coming. So we we'll introduce you once again to Tim Desmond. Hi, Tim. Hi. <clears throat> Hi. Thanks, so, thanks for having me back again. Oh, it's wonderful. So, always good to, good to see you. Yeah, good and, to see you. And you know you always come up with very interesting things. So what is happening? Well, um, the, I told you the last time I was here, I was going to bring the painting to show you. So it's uh, four, be, four feet by four feet or mm -hmm. 48 inches. But it's, um, it's on the, the one um, photo that I had sent them for the, um, for the shot. There it is there. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Um, the story is now two years ago, it was in uh, the black and white show because it was all black and white. Mm -hmm. And I did it for uh, the Sorensen's uh, gallery um, black and white show that was in May of uh, uh, 15. And then the after that was done, I was going to enter it in Fresno Fair, which I did. Uh -huh. Well, that was the same year that California passed a law uh, about uh, their vendors and their stores cannot sell images of the Confederate flag. You're kidding. And so in the painting is the Confederate flags. Of course. Um, which is, um, uh, some people don't recognize them as being Confederate flags because um, it's not the battle flag showing, it's a national flag. Mm -hmm. that has the St. Andrew's Cross in the corner. And uh, that one is, uh, if I can, um, well, it's in the photo itself. It has all white field. Mm -hmm. And that's a, that was the f second flag of the Confederate States. Oh. Uh, this was the first flag of the Confederate States. Wow. And so uh, uh, when people look at this one, they think it's a, a revolutionary flag, but um, this was the first national Confederate States flag, and this was the one called the Stars and Bars. It has the stars in yeah, here in the field. Yeah, that is and fantastic. Instead of stripes, it's bars, uh -huh. red, white, and blue uh -huh. bars. So uh -huh. this, a lot of times when this was furled in the battles, this would look like the American flag. And so in order to do that, they changed to the second national flag it was all white, but it had the battle flag, Andrew's cross in the corner. Mm. And then that got to where people were thinking, well, if that was all white, it looked like a surrender flag. Uh -oh. So they added, <laughs> in, toward the end of the war, they added this. Oh my this, is gosh. The, this is the third national Confederate States flag. Well, this is so, amazing. So the crazy thing is, uh, my understanding is this was um, adopted in December of 1864, the war was over in the spring in April and oh, May. Yeah, yeah. After that, that this was never really flown uh, in a battle. Wow. But um, and then many many regiments adopted their this as their regimental flag. For um, so there's uh, the Confederate flag was not just one flag, it, but the ones in the the ones in the painting were are two real Confederate flags. Some people thought, oh, the painting was a fake because it, those aren't really Confederate flags. They were flown. Some people di didn't know that. And, uh, oh, here's another one. This is, uh, this is what's called the Bonnie Blue. This was the first star of the first state that seceded, which was South Carolina. Oh, no kidding. So there's songs about the Bonnie Blue. Oh, my and, gosh. Uh, and then the, then the other flag that pe that's in the painting, here's a full-size replica of it. Wow. And this is a oh. this is a unit battle flag um, for the third Confederate Infantry Regiment. Shiloh. Yeah. And this the honors painted on it is their battle honors. Oh my uh, gosh. at the different battles. And this oh. was in this was designed by General Hardy, who was a Union general who wrote uh, the manual of arms for the Union Army before the Civil War. But wow. but he stayed with the South. He designed this for this for his corps, and this was a a, a unit in uh, uh, Claiborne's Claiborne's division, which never which never changed their flag. Wow! So oh, my husband should be watching today because he's in Civil War. Yeah, yeah. The real flag, like this one, I I made this one, 
it, the real flag like this one is in the Arkansas Museum in Little Rock, in the old State House Museum. Oh my! And it God. has battle holes in it, and um, uh, it's it's under glass and it's preserved. Oh, but, that's uh, fantastic! Now the cannon doesn't mean artillery. The cannon is an honor. That means this rev this these infantry took cannon in battle. They oh! Took, they took artillery units, <laughs> and so. Um, <sighs> That's wow. just that's just one thing about the, the Confederate uh, flags. There's, there's so many of them, oh. and they they were most of them are um, flags of honor because of their units. Uh -huh. But all over the South, they're trying to take down monuments that have been up over hundreds of years. Why? Because of uh, the politically correct dogma that's out there oh about my gosh. the Confederacy being about slavery. Which is oh, which is arguable, but even if it was, the, the point of the, their states at the time was um, the, the reasons didn't matter. They had every right to secede under their view of the Constitution. Yeah. So, but, <laughs> wow. So, and, um, I've never even it, thought about the flags. These yeah. are fabulous. And this is the original cover of the dock. And this is the kind of stuff oh, that the, yeah. the character learned when they first started reenacting. Of course, here's the battle flag here. Uh-huh. And this is the one that's such a hated symbol, you know. I can't even, understand even, why you would hate a flag. Even NASCAR banned it. And they, oh my gosh. Uh, uh, but uh, so the Doc sequel is coming out in October. Uh -huh. This is the first one about the Doc and the Civil War reenactors. And I'm I'm gonna be signing this book at Barnes Sunday coming <gasps> up. Fabulous. And um, as well as the other book that came out a year ago. But uh, I'm encouraging people to read this one before the sequel comes out. And uh, so this this is the kind of thing my Confederate reenactors were all, <laughs> were all learning that were part of this story. Oh my so. gosh. Well, so, so tell me a little bit about the story. Well, um, Confederate reenactors um, here in California, they were from a small town of Mudford. <laughs> it's, it's, up, it's up on the Chowchilla River on Highway 99. It doesn't exist. It's a fictional town. Fictional. <laughs> but they, they, they were reenactors, and it was a doctor friend, and their daughter of the, and family friend of the reenactors um, got in trouble um, because she was uh, dating this fellow that was um, um, part of uh, a defense intelligence agency. Uh, agent mm. and he decides to uh, uh, because of his love for her ch it has him second guessing everything he did and he was, <laughs> and he was going to create this document um, uh, about all the nasty deeds that he had done <laughs> in, in his service and um, so he gets in trouble she gets in trouble the dad gets in trouble, oh, and the oh. doc, their friend, tries to <laughs> tries to help him out, and um, and that, so that's that's basically what the starting of the story is about, and mm -hmm. it goes into the reenactments uh, uh, with uh, some of the story, obviously, and uh, so it moves the plot. Ah, that ought to so, be fun. But it's um, there are so many. I think a lot of novels have loose ends. Everything's not tied up. Mm -hmm. So the sequel to that is called Delete Doc, unless the, unless the publisher doesn't like the title. <laughs> but um, that's coming out in October. Oh, great. So, oh, fabulous. You have to come back when that comes out. Oh, sure, sure. And then this is, um, this is the Pappy Butler book that was out a year ago. Oh, yes. And this was the one that's out. I'll be signing this one at Barnes also. So, uh, just a reminder, Pappy Butler was the frustrated physics instructor. His marriage is on the rocks. He's in trouble with his employer. Oh, and then he gets tied up with these two professors that uh, have uh, uh, conspiracy connections. Oh. And so, Pappy Butler is uh, still trying to put his life together as well <laughs> as uh, keep his job. and. Uh, it's it's more of a love story than some people thought uh, because of uh, he and his wife, hmm. and so. 
Well, I like married love stories. Yeah. Most of the most of love in the my book is with Mary. Yeah. My editor said when she was reading, she said she can't put it down. And so <laughs> uh, the original title was just uh, the zero time f field. Uh -huh. And she said it, it's it's really more too about Pappy. So they added it's a longer title than I like, but this is what it's ended up being, with what the editors thought. So. And, and what is this? Is that a oh, helicopter yeah, lifting it, something? Yeah, it's at night. Um, there was an attack, with um, with the Federals against this other guy's private helicopters. Oh. And this is this pyramid is the molecule machine, that was invented by one of the. Uh, professors I was telling you about. Yeah. Well, um, they tried to take it. Uh oh. So, <laughs> and, and this was a campus, campus buildings. So, Great. It sounds fantastic. Well, um, again, this has only been out a year, and sometimes I think this one got limited exposure. I don't know why, but uh, but this one was out longer for one thing, mm -hmm. and this was still newer, and uh, this one, uh, the. The editor also said, besides the fact she couldn't put it down, she said it's one of the saddest stories she ever read. So wow. I'm thinking, well, maybe that's not bad because that's feeling and stories are feelings. Well, emotion, you know? yeah, you gotta yeah. have emotion. In right, it. it's not just all plot. <laughs> right. But, uh, I mean, obviously, plot moves the story. <laughs> and uh, you say you're selling now at Barnes & Noble. Yeah, Sunday at noon at Barnes & Noble at Fresno. Blackstone and Knees, um, I'll be there signing both books. They have wow. both. They have both books in. Fantastic. And, uh, so I'm excited about it. Haven't been back there since um, 2008, and uh, or nine. Wow, so, that's a long time. Yeah, I, I did uh, two or three different events there mm -hmm. in the 2000s with um, my first book. I'm not going to push Barnes & Noble with mine until all four books of the novel are published, you know. I sure. wanted it. It's a set. Sure. So I'm not really doing too much right now, but uh, I know you have to do a lot of work to market these books. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. It's a business uh, for the author. It definitely is. And uh, so... And uh, probably nobody could dream of all the things that you have to do and go through. It's like a saga, you know, by the time you do the book and then you've got all of these things happening before it ever becomes right. out there where people can read it. Right. <laughs> well, listen, uh, you have any other thing besides that that you want to let, let us know about? I think I brought all my show and tell stuff. The okay. The then flags then and the book then cover. repeat but once more. Sunday, yeah, you're reading... Sunday. Sunday, Sunday Barnes and Noble. So. August 13th at noon, Barnes and Noble in Fresno. I'll be signing both titles. The Doc. So and what time, what hours will you be there? I'll probably be there th two or three hours okay. from noon to two or three. Noon to two or three. Yeah. Okay. So. You guys, you got a wonderful opportunity to s these wonders, wonderfully interesting books to go and actually have the author there and be able to sign the book for you. So. Let's come out for him. Thank you so much for coming in again. Th thank Sam. you so much. Really yeah. Enjoy having you. Good come, to see come you. Come again. Come again. I'll see you in again in a couple months. Okay. So, <laughs> thank you. We'll be right back.